Main phase. Hello and welcome. Today's video is one where two aspects of gaming history that I enjoy collide. Semicom games and interesting revisions. MAME 0.238 adds support for the clone set New Hyperman 3 and 1 with Cookie and BB and Hyperman set 2, which on the surface sounds like nothing special and until I tried it myself I thought the same. New Hyperman is a follow-up to Semicom's Hyper Pac-Man. It exists only in this 3 and 1 unit, which also includes an updated version of Semicom's Puzzle Bobble knockoff Cookie and BB2 with some new levels and a renamed version of the original Hyper Pac-Man, now simply known as Hyperman. It's a game with a Pac-Man character that instead of playing like Pac-Man is a maze-based shooter. It's not what most players are expecting and quickly ends up being dismissed. It's a game that even I have often overlooked despite doing the emulation for it, which includes extracting the protection data. In this video, footage from the more common version will be shown at the top left, and footage from the recently dumped old revision will be shown at the bottom right. The footage will be paused between stages to keep things in sync so the changes can be discussed. Right from the game select screen we can see differences. The backgrounds for the different options are mostly black in the second set, with different animated elements. The priority of the new text at the top was also adjusted between the revisions. The how to play screen also reveals one of the biggest differences. The first set of the game is a two button game. It has a fix and shoot button as well as a dash button. These names are displayed on the screen. The second set, the newly dumped one, uses only a single button. Shooting is automatic and there is no dash. The button acts as a fix function and locks your aim while you're holding it. Moving into the game, presentation wise you quickly notice some differences between the two revisions too. As you kill enemies in the game, you level up. When you level up, there is a text pop up next to your character. In the better known set, this is animated, the letters spin, giving the presentation some flair. In the newly dumped set, there is no animation on the letters, the standard font is used, and while functional, it is less impressive. The other very apparent change to the presentation comes in the stage complete text. This one is more interesting because the second set does do a screen fade effect and even has a unique, albeit static, stage clear graphic. A colour cycle effect is applied to that graphic. The more common revision instead gets rid of the screen fade effect, drops down the letters from the top of the screen, and then flips them in a similar way to what we saw with the level up text. For these first two stages, the level designs have been the same between revisions. Stage 3 is where you start to see enemy differences. In the newly dumped set, the two slime enemies don't appear. Instead, two regular ghosts are used. This is something you'll see throughout the game, as the slime enemies do not exist at all in the newly dumped set, and is another indication that this is an earlier version. Stage 5 marks the first appearance of one of the power pills, which are used rarely throughout the game. In this case it's a hidden item, so you have to shoot the empty tile where it resides to reveal it. This also demonstrates why the automatic firing mechanism of the newly dumped set isn't ideal. You usually end up shooting the enemies before you can eat them unless you lock your fire in the opposite direction. you <laughs> 
Stage 8 once more introduces a new enemy type in the better known set, an armadillo style enemy which rolls around quickly and is invulnerable in that state. The newly discovered set again uses regular ghosts here. The enemy does appear in other places in both sets, so this is a balance change rather than something that is missing from one of the versions. You can also see one of the game mechanics in play here. As your character levels up, your shot type permanently improves. This works the same in both versions, although I hit level 10 slightly earlier in the second set here. Stage 9 again rebalances the enemy types, with four armadillo style enemies in the first set, with two of them being replaced with ghosts in the other. This, again, feels like a balance change, with the newer revision of the game wanting to make things tougher. Stage 10 is dramatically different. The set that has been supported for many years presents a boss enemy at this point, whereas the newly dumped set plays out a unique, regular level. This change will be a sign of things to come, and is one of the clearest indicators that the second set is a significantly earlier revision. The art assets for this boss, much like the slime enemies, are nowhere to be found in the graphics ROMs, suggesting it hadn't been created yet. While you might think this makes the newly dump set less interesting, because the boss, which isn't present in this set, is one of the most impressive things seen so far, I take the side that not having the boss makes the newly dump set incredibly interesting, because you're looking at a stage design which would eventually be cut, a lost level as we tend to say in game. The World 2 title card flashes up, indicating the next set of levels will be a snow and ice world. I didn't mention it when the first world popped up, but if you're wondering why these photos are used and seem out of place against the rest of the graphics, I believe it's because they're recycled backgrounds from the Cooking BB2 puzzle bot book that is also included. The first stage of World 2 introduces a new penguin type enemy. These fly around, homing in on you while ignoring the walls. They can only damage you, and only be damaged when they land. This marks the third and final regular enemy type in the newly dumped set, and the fourth and final enemy type on the better known revision. One thing I haven't been mentioning, but if you were assertive you may have noticed anyway, is that level indicators under the enemies differ between sets on some stages, even when the enemy types remain the same. We'll start to see more of this as the game progresses, and I haven't verified this isn't controlled in some way by the dip switches, although both sets are set to the same defaults, and I also haven't verified that it isn't some kind of internal rank system based on your own level, although in playing the game multiple times I always saw the same level enemies. For the first half of this world, that's really the only difference, the enemy types and placements don't change. Overall, the newly dumped set seems easier, and assuming the enemy levels were rebalanced rather than there being other factors, generally presents you with lower level enemies, resulting in quicker stage clears, as the lower level enemies take less shots to kill. I have not checked if anything changes when adding a second player.
Stage 17 continues a line of stages with the same enemy layouts. Penguin enemies introduced in these ice stages, however, demonstrate why the run feature in the better known revision is important. While there are speed power-ups in the game, they are infrequent, and the enemies home in on you quickly, meaning sometimes the only way to get yourself into a distant position to shoot them is by using the dash function, which the older revision does not have. Stage 18 positions the penguin enemies that start in the centre slightly differently. This is presumably because in the older set they were spawning almost exactly on top of you, which can be confusing. Stage 20, and once again we have a boss in the better known set, while the newly dumped set, the older revision, once again has a unique regular stage instead. This is possibly also the only appearance of a 1-up power-up in the game, meaning the 1-up power-up may not be used in the later revision. The boss in the regular set is of course the penguin, which fits the ice theme. The boss rendering is slightly frustrating here, with the shadows sometimes flickering on and off in the same frames as your invulnerability, rendering you partially invisible. This maybe should have been fixed by the developers. The World 3 title card shows a city, and the overall theme is an industrial one. For the first stage of this world, the better known set shows us the less common slime enemies once more. The newly discovered set uses four ghosts in place of the two slimes. For an unknown reason, the Stage 23 music ended up sounding rather strange on the newly dumped set. Considering the game is calling the same Z80 commands to play the same music tracks over and over, this is confusing, and I need to verify that it isn't a bug introduced with one of the YMFM core updates. Stage 24 uses some ghosts in the newly dumped set, whereas the more dangerous armadillo enemies are used in the better known set, which makes things significantly more difficult there. Thank you. 
Stage 27 swaps two penguins for two armadillo enemies in the better known revision, meaning the level uses three different enemy types, again making it trickier. Stage 29 makes an unusual change. Four cherry pickups have been replaced with two additional slime enemies in the later revision. Stage 30 is, once again, a boss fight in the better known revision, and a unique, but rather boring stage in the newly dubbed set. Essentially both stages here are empty arenas, but in one version there's a boss, and in the other there are a large number of enemies. Interestingly, despite the industrial theme of this third world, and a large number of biohazard containers being used as background elements, the primary enemy, and thus the boss, is the armadillo style one, rather than the slimes. The so-called World 4 shows a nature-themed background on the title screen, and indeed we are returned to the first tile set, which was used for stages 1 through 10. The layout of stage 31 is the same in both, with just a handful of lower level enemies.
Stage 34 sees four ghosts replaced with the four lesser common slime enemies. Maybe unexpectedly, Stage 36 starts with another world title card, this time World 5, and it is the second theme of the game again, the Ice theme. First stage in this world is the same between revisions. Stage 37 is perhaps the most curious stage in the game. In the newly dumped, older revision of the game, the four islands in the centre each have a ghost on them. These ghosts appear to have glitchy positioning as they quickly move over the water part to the playfield where the player is. The newer revision of the game instead has four slimes on these islands and they remain on the islands. The islands are also a different colour, indicating there's solid water in the older revision and regular ground on the newer one. This is the only time outside of a boss battle where I've observed a change to the mapping data and it's clearly a bug fix. The ghosts are glitching in the recently dumped older version because they have been placed on solid wall titles and are trying to find a proper floor tile. Stage 40, despite being a multiple 10, is not a boss battle in either set, but a regular level, the same between sets. Stage 41 starts with another world title card, this time showing world 6 and using the cityscape background, meaning we have the industrial theme we saw for levels 21 to 30. The first level here replaces 6 ghosts with 6 slimes.
stage 42 replaces four ghosts with four slimes. Stage 43 once again replaces four ghosts with four slimes, with this rare enemy type making a frequent appearance during these final few stages. This is actually in fitting with the toxic waste theme, unlike when we saw the tile set being used the first time around. Obviously these slimes aren't present in the older version of the game, as they don't exist in the ROM there. Having said we were seeing an increasing number of slimes, stage 44 doesn't feature any, remaining the same between revisions. Stage 45 gives us our final boss battle in the better known revision, with the enemy this time being a larger version of the only enemy type we haven't seen for a boss yet, the giant slime. In the newly dumped, older revision, this is a tough, unique, regular stage with a large number of armadillo enemies, some ghosts and very, very little room to move around. After stage 45, the credits roll, they're short and identical in both versions. The game then returns to the attract demo. As an aside, the game also seems to make the classic mistake of not letting you enter any high score initials after completion, and recording both your final score and the score for every time you continued as AAA. This happens to a lesser extent when playing regularly, but if you don't continue, you do get to enter your initials for the final credit at least. Quite why so many games get this wrong is a mystery for the ages.
In conclusion, the newly dumped set is clearly an earlier revision, as I've been referring to it as. It's missing an entire enemy type, all the larger boss forms, has less flair to the presentation, and even has a stage with a flawed design, and a control scheme that doesn't gel well with some of the other game mechanics. But there's more to think about here. While the more common version adds the fourth enemy type, it feels like Semicom intended for there to be four different world types. The final 15 stages, every five reusing an earlier theme, feels especially out of place, whereas it made more sense when there are only three enemy types. The fact there's no unique theme for the final boss at the end of a third recycled world after two without any boss doesn't seem properly structured. Thinking more about the design choices, I can't help but think the slime enemies were intended for the industrial stages as there's an overall theme of toxic waste scattered about those levels, but as the slime enemies weren't present in the earlier version of the game, the armadillo enemies ended up being used there instead. At some point in development, the developers must have realised that the fourth enemy type was important, so added it in, but still didn't have either the time or ROM capacity to provide the additional world graphics, or didn't want to have to rework the already created stages too much. New Hyperman remains a curious title, and due to being bundled in the 3-in-1 unit, which itself has no clear title and spends most of the attract mode showing other games, often ends up getting somewhat lost in Semicom's library of games. The newly dumped set gives some insight into the development process, as do many early revisions, and in some senses presents a game with a cleaner structure, albeit one that was definitely light on content. It's difficult to say if this set is a prototype or just an earlier revision that was less widely distributed, but it does make me wonder if significantly different versions exist for some of the other Semicom games that are supported in MAME.